So welcome to part two of uh, emotional intelligence. So in part one, we had seen uh, the basics of uh, emotions, the intelligence, and how it uh, uh, impacts various aspects of our lives. Here we're going to study a few tools today on the benefits of uh, emotional intelligence and the practical applications in our lives. And I'm going to start with a couple of formulas. I mean, some of us like math, some of us don't like mathematics, but we're going to start with a simple formula, an equation. And this is a very uh, old equation, which has stood its test of time in the last few decades. Uh, an equation created by the famous McKinsey. And uh, this equation is called as a trust formula. So how can you establish trust between two individuals? That's uh, this particular equation all about. It has a numerator and a denominator. So the numerator stands as C plus R plus I. So basically it's trust equal to numerator C plus R plus I. And then you put the denominator, which is SO. So you'll get C, R, I and below you'll get SO. So it's also famous called as a CRISO formula, C, R, I, S, O, you know, CRISO formula if you Google it, you will find it all coming up, you know. So let's try to understand uh, what do each of these letters stand for. So how can trust be established between two people? And the formula has uh, stood its test, uh, not just in time, <clears throat> but also in the variety of relationships. The same formula holds good for uh, two friends, spouse, husband, wife, official relationships, boss, employee, peers, client relationships, vendor relationships, it just the same formula is applicable. Uh, the context can vary a little bit and you'll understand what the context is, you know, as we go on. So let's understand the first letter, which is C. C stands for credibility. So when there is a initial interaction between people, how credible are you coming across when you talk to him or her? And credibility has a lot to do with uh, your background, what you have come up with, the way you are presenting yourself. So how credible are you, you know, when you come in? Uh, it's not just the looks or the personality or the presence. It could also be, you know, the educational background. It could be uh, your thoughts, the way of the wisdom, whatever it is, the way of speaking. The entire uh, package is called as credibility. And the context varies depending on the relationship. You know, in a husband, wife, it's a different thing. In a client relationship, it's a totally different thing. Okay, so it will keep changing and you will get it as you know you move on. The second one is something called as reliability. So C, R. R is reliability. So it's not enough to be just credible. Uh, you also need to be reliable again and again and again. You know? So um, the emotions play a strong role. It's, you can't let go of it. So one is you're credible. Okay, fine. But are you able to consistently do it? you know, every week, every month, you know, as and when, you know, you interact with the person. So that's reliability. The third I stands for intimacy. Uh, intimacy, again, has various connotations, but it really means how close are you in terms of the personal connect? What is the personal bonding that you have made with the, with the particular, in the particular relationship context? Because ultimately, we are all human beings. So the intimacy plays a very important role. How can you personally connect uh, with the with the person in whatever manner possible, it's not a robotic relationship, you know, of CNR, but you're also putting a human element into it. So I actually is a human element into it, and then you divide. Okay, so now anything below the the line is going to bring down the equation. So you have to be very careful of it. So C R I is very high. Below is something called as self orientation S O. Okay, are you oriented towards yourself? Or are you oriented towards the other? Are you looking at your interests? Are you looking at the interests of the other? In the case of a business relationship, do you have the other person's interest in mind? Or are you looking at your interest? In the case of two friends, are you only looking at your interest? Or are you also looking at, you know, friends indeed are, you know, in need of friends indeed? Are you looking at 
helping the other. In the case of spouse relationship, are you looking at the other? So, you know, self-orientation. So, this particular formula it has stood its test in time. It's amazing. It's kind of gone a long way in the last uh, many years and uh, been dissected and trisected, but it's it just stands exactly where it is. The second matrix uh, which I want to roll, uh, you know, roll out today is created by Paul Hearsay and Ken Blanchard. This is called as a skill will matrix. And uh, the skill will matrix is basically a relationship between you and now this is very purely in the business and the and the corporate context. It's the, the relationship that you share between you and another person more from a you know, a boss and subordinate perspective, okay. So, I will not spend too much time on it, but it is called the skill will matrix, very important matrix when it comes to leadership and when it comes to, you know, handling our own selves from a very intelligent manner. And there are four uh, quadrants to this, a low skill, low will, a low skill, high will, high skill, low will, high skill, high will, okay, the four quadrants that are there. And depending on which quadrant, the person is in, you need to change your uh, leadership style. You know, it could be direct, it could be delegate, it could be excite, it could be guide. It all depends on which uh, quadrant the person is in. So, I recommend you all to kind of go through this particular matrix at your leisure and uh, do a study on it because that forms the basis of uh, a leadership transformation. It also forms the basis of how you need to be emotionally mature when you handle various kinds of people because when it comes to delegate uh, there's also an element of uh, you know uh, threat fear jealousy insecurity these are emotions which slowly creep in uh, you know when the person who who is reporting to you starts getting as good or better than you i'm giving various scenarios the skill and matrix actually covers the entire spectrum of uh, you know uh, bonding and relationships and it's very interesting to see how uh, things change, you know, from uh, place to place or point to point. Last week, uh, and we had given an exercise on uh, art of listening. I hope all of you took the time to do, do it. If not, please do check that uh, video right at the end. We spoke about how you can uh, talk to people and just listen in a sense of silence. Many times there's an urge to speak. You know, in a, in, when you're sitting with a person, there's always an urge to speak. Just go on speaking. And uh, true relationships are formed in silence. True bonding, true relationships are really formed in silence. It shows a very uh, emotionally mature uh, uh, being when you can just remain silent and just absorb what the other person is talking and saying. And the other person also feels much more relieved, you know, when they keep on talking. Incidentally, this is also the basis of uh, coaching. So, in case any of you do uh, take uh, official coaching credential certification, one of the first things you will be taught is, how can you listen? Just listen well, because coaching, the listening is the bedrock and the foundation of uh, coaching. It is said, uh, scientifically proven, that you can sit, I mean, you, you can have uh, silence of 45 seconds, you can go all the way up to 45 seconds and still maintain, hold the space as it's called. You hold the space between yourself without speaking to each other and the gap can be anywhere from 0 to 45 seconds. But it's a very presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. You have to be very, it has to be very, uh, it has to be filled with a lot of presence. It's not that you keep silent and you kind of, you know, and, and you're on the mobile, you know, or it's not that. You are actually involved. It is a very active uh, silence, if there is a word like that, I am not sure. It is a very uh, it's active listening is there. It is a very uh, engaged silence, you know, that you can experiment with it. Uh, if you have done level 1 of exercise last week, I would suggest this week uh, you try and do level 2 and uh, you just try to be silent and this time you can do it with anybody, you know, with parents, with uh, in case you have uh, children. Um, you know, with friends, spouse, silence works like magic. Just being silent, you know, even with, with clients or at work, with peers, just try this experiment. Remain a little more silent, talk less, you know, and listen more. 
it's also connected to something called as theory u okay uh, theory u is a very famous uh, theory uh, which uh, it's like a u format right theory u and here we talk about again about listing various levels of listing so theory u is about various levels of how you can listen to each other so are you listening to the words or are you listening to the meaning behind the words or are you listening to the unspoken word okay or are we listening also to the body language the emotions behind it are we trying to intuit okay what the other person is going through uh, and is there an emptiness that we can create in between us which can co-create a different level of solutioning or a different level of uh, you know productivity around you so listening also has various levels you know and uh, you start with basic listening and then you go on to listening to you know as i said you know the words meaning behind the words unspoken word and then you go on to the feelings behind the words body language you can you can actually practice reading each other's you know body language and uh, then go on to trying to just allow the silence this is what i like best about theory u is the fourth level where you allow the silence to co-create something very unique and different to emerge what this means is that it is not your intelligence or not the other person's intelligence you have allowed a uh, a higher being if i may use the word a higher potentiality to come up and allow it to emerge between the two of you and take the whole a uh, conversation to a much higher level and uh, this can again come through only you know a sense of utmost silence you know that's uh, there within us i'd also like to draw about uh, uh, we had spoken about the various emotions last week the atlas of emotions which is uh, you know anger fear you know various uh, emotions sadness uh, depression disgust etc etc Uh, in fact there's a movie also made uh, in it uh, i think it's in tamil yeah it's called navarasa it's there in uh, netflix nice movie nice uh, series of short uh, 30 minute episodes depicting the navarasa the nine emotions you know nine uh, emotions that are present in a in a being so this is very closely connected uh, to our uh, entire uh, system you know that we have Uh, which is the pindu pradesh so now i'm actually going to go into the uh, as you meditate so last last week and i think in the last uh, many days and weeks you have been doing combination of meditation cleansing in a connect etc so today uh, we'll delve upon a few aspects on how the emotions play around in our body so you have the five uh, points within the heart region or the pindu pradesh and uh, it's all here you know the uh, five points and this particular region in the spirituality uh, perspective is also called as a, the dwandwas dwandwas means opposites the pindu pradesh is the heart region and we experience the opposites of emotions so for example right at point 1 we have contentment you know where a person is extremely content the positive side of emotion whereas uh, we have discontentment you know or disturbances uh, worldly disturbances you know, that are playing in our, our being so that's the first you know set of emotions which is right there you know as we meditate you will actually pass through these stages and then we have the second point um, uh, so the first point is you know right on the left hand side the second point is here uh, the point uh, of akasha where you have a sense of calmness you know sense of calmness that is there vis-a-vis a sense of restlessness so it's you know opposites calmness restlessness contentment you know disturbances etc and then you have the third point where uh, you have a sense of compassion you know there's a huge feeling of compassion what it means is if that if the point is purified or the point is touched you know as you uh, evolve in the spiritual journey you'll feel a sense of compassion towards people around you vis-a-vis you know hatred 
anger you know which uh, is there so if the point is disturbed you instantly feel a lot of anger something what we discussed about the trigger the emotion the response a reaction if you remember in the last video you will feel a sense of you know anger and this is how it really pans out you know in terms of how we connect science and spirituality in some sense the fourth point is uh, where we have courage unending courage vis-a-vis -vis fear you know so again there is two opposites you know courage and uh, fear and the fifth point right on top uh, right at the center also called as a kanta chakra is a combination of uh, the opposites of clarity versus confusion so you'll see the the five c's as uh, daji puts it the positive emotions positive states of mind vis-a-vis -vis the complete restlessness and the disturbances the fearful states you know and the hatred etc all that play on the negative so when you if you actually cleanse yourself which is what we're going to practice today sense of cleaning if you cleanse yourself of uh, the uh, you know the emotional content of your memories you know if you cleanse yourself of all the emotional content of the various memories that you have gone through in our past you know 10 20 30 years of existence uh, automatically the positive emotions tend to emerge out the positive uh, sense of the dwandvas they tend to project outwards and that leads to a real transformation in yourself which can be touched upon by your friends your family uh, your workplace you know social circles the same thing projects out you know as you feel a cleansing happening inside the same thing tends to slowly but surely project outwards as we move on it's also important to note at this point that uh, there are various chemicals we have in our uh, brain and uh, which are responsible for happiness in some sense so we have uh, you know chemicals like cortisol you know which is also called the fear chemical uh, we have uh, oxytocin which is a love chemical when there is excessive love that you are having uh, without expectation okay love without expectation there is a sense of oxytocin that is you know uh, secreted from from the brain which leads one to a, a very joyful and a positive state of uh, being we have uh, some chemicals like melatonin very important for deep sleep you know so melatonin secreted in the night especially when you watch a lot of blue screens you know melatonin is not secreted which leads to sleep issues which can again lead to a lot of emotional turmoil so it's interesting to note that our uh, entire being is a combination of a lot of chemicals which are there which we need to kind of grapple with and uh, and of course you know the heart system that is there you have dopamine which is also called as uh, the uh, you know the chemical which helps you to complete activities and similarly you have the word dope it's a drug which gives you a kick the feeling that you get when you finish something so you notice you know there are a lot of uh, artificial drugs to help you spike those same chemicals which are there uh, naturally in our being melatonin capsules are available for sleep you know or i said you know dope etc you'll find a lot of parallel words uh, uh, that are there to just help you you know recover it but if you uh, really practice uh, the practices of heartfulness and especially today we're going to practice uh, cleaning uh, you will really feel a sense of lightness in your spirit a sense of cleansing in yourself uh, which uh, you know all these medicines may not be able to give you it it comes to you very naturally you know as if you clean yourself properly you will feel a sense of calmness a sense of courage coming in a sense of compassion on an ongoing basis so thank you so much uh, for uh, being here till now and uh, enjoy the process of cleaning and we'll catch up again thank you bye sit in a comfortable position with the intention to remove all the impressions accumulated during the day sit comfortably and close your eyes softly and gently
Imagine that all impurities and complexities in your body are moving to the back of your upper body. Now imagine that the impurities and complexities are starting to flow out as smoke from the back of your upper body, beginning with the back of your head. They are slowly moving out from the back of your head. And from the back of your neck in the form of smoke. The impurities and complexities are also now leaving from the back of your shoulders. They are flowing out as smoke. And now from your upper back. and lower back. From the back of your entire upper body, impurities and complexities are flowing out as smoke. From the back of your entire upper body, impurities and complexities are flowing out as smoke. Gently accelerate this process. Accelerate the flow from the back of your head and from the back of your neck. Imagine the complexities and impurities flowing out faster from the back of your shoulders, from your upper back, and your lower back.
from the back of your entire upper body, impurities and complexities are flowing out as smoke. Imagine that the flow of smoke is getting faster. All impurities and complexities are leaving your body in the form of smoke from the back of your head. From the back of your neck. From the back of your shoulders. your upper back and lower back. From your entire upper body, impurities and complexities are flowing out as smoke.
from the back of your entire upper body, impurities and complexities are flowing out as smoke. This process is getting faster and faster. All impurities and complexities are leaving your body in the form of smoke from the back of your head. From the back of your neck. From the back of your shoulders. your upper back, and lower back. Feel yourself getting lighter as the impurities are leaving your system.
Imagine that the flow of smoke is gently tapering off. Feel that all impurities and complexities have now left your body. We are now ready to begin the second part of the process. Imagine a current of purity coming from the source of all creation and entering your heart from in front. This current is flowing into your heart and spreading throughout your system. Every particle is getting saturated in it. Imagine every particle of your body is emanating lightness and simplicity. Imagine yourself returning to a more balanced state. Now gently open your eyes.